Okay, welcome everyone uh, to our Pathways to Law School panel. Today, we are gonna have um, several lawyers and judge, well, a judge and several lawyers uh, talk to us about their pathway uh, that they went into law school with. We are joined by three student moderators, Soleil Salazar, Faith Parker, and Carlos Hatchett. And they'll be guiding us for our questioning. Yes, and hello everyone. My name is attorney Robin McCoy and I'm a local attorney. I was actually uh, born and raised in this area. I grew up in Ypsilanti. I, I was in Ypsilanti for the first 17 years of my life. And I'm excited to bring you this uh, distinguished panel of attorneys and we have a judge. And so I'm gonna, um, you know, I've been practicing 19 years. I do criminal defense, family law, neglect and delinquency. And we have, I'll start with, uh, a, if you can raise your hand so everybody can see you, attorney Toy Dennis, who is also the president of the Vanzetti Hamilton Bar Association. And uh, Toy, can you raise your hand so people can see? who you are okay <laughs> we and then we have attorney uh zanita clipper uh yes zanita can you yep raise your hand uh we have um assistant prosecutor lou danner who is with us and we have the chief assistant prosecutor victoria burton harris and we have the honorable judge miriam perry so we have this distinguished panel of uh attorneys and a judge uh, to talk to you guys today about um, our path to law school and you know just letting you know about what lawyers do and so we're really excited so I'm going to turn it back to the students uh, to ask us questions and I know we have some prepared questions or if there's other questions I think they said you can put it in the Q&A and yes so and thank you for welcoming us here. Okay, so we're gonna begin our questions, students. So um, if you could go to that question section on the agenda, um, we'll start with number one. What does a lawyer do? Um, and then, so we'll start, we'll go through, um, Toy will be first, Ms. Dennis, Ms. Clipper, then Mr. Danner, uh, Ms. Burton Harris, and then Ms. Perry. Did you say Miss Dennis first? I'm sorry. Yeah. Yep. Go ahead. Okay. Well, a lawyer does a lot, actually. Our main job is to advocate on behalf of our client, whether that is a person who is bringing um, a charge, which would be a plaintiff, or whether that is a person who we are defending from a charge, which would be a defendant. Um, I personally like the advocation part. Um, we actually, we also bring change. Uh, we can be um, legislators or judges um, and we uh, use our platform to help with legislation to change certain things, um, to become Congress people or senators. Um, basically, uh, we help people <laughs> navigate their way through the justice system. Okay, and I see the list in the chat, so I'll go uh, next. Yes, uh, like Toy said, a lawyer is an advocate. Uh, in my capacity as a lawyer, I have been a defense attorney, so when somebody gets in trouble, like I've represented some kids, I go and represent them in court, or um, I've also been an advocate for children that have been in the neglect and abuse system. Family law, I represent one party, like maybe a party is gonna get a divorce or have a custody dispute. Uh, or I even have acted as a lawyer with educational advocacy and helping students like making sure that they're getting uh, special ed support or general ed support if they're facing expulsion or suspension from school. So I would say, uh, yeah, key word is that a lawyer is an advocate. Do you want us to continue going or are you guys going to the next question? Um, so we can move on to the next question. Number two. What do each of the panelists do as lawyers? So Ms. Clipper, we can start with you. Um, well, we advocate um, on behalf of our clients. So like Robin was, like Attorney McCoy was saying, we advocate if it's in 
um, defense attorneys, we advocate to see if the prosecutors brought a case that certain elements were met. We advocate that aspect. If it was represented in divorces, we advocate our, our client's position. Um, so we basically sell our, our version of the story to the, to the judge. Um, we also clean up messes. Um, I prefer sometimes to call myself expensive maid. Um, so we do a little bit of everything. We're firefighters in suits. Um, hello, also, I'm a assistant prosecutor attorney. And basically what that means, what I do in my relation is it's solely criminal in, in nature for the most part. And basically I articulate and uphold the laws of the state and the constitution in regards to anybody who may have violated those laws or have violated uh, any kind of constitution or statutes of the state or the federal constitution. And basically my whole job is to assure that an individual who is accused of committing a crime actually committed said crime, that they're provided with, with whatever due process that they have, make sure that all their constitutional rights have been afforded to them, and then ultimately try to seek a, a resolution in regards to what the law provides, as well as what justice would want and try to do the best to serve justice of the community, as well as the individual who's accused of a crime. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Victoria. Um, I work with uh, Mr. Danner in the prosecutor's office and uh, we represent the people. <clears throat> we represent the people of the state of Michigan. So we don't advocate uh, for uh, the defendant. We don't advocate for the victim. We advocate for what is in the best interest of justice to keep you all safe in our community. Um, and for me, I am um, in administration. And so I um, am largely tasked with uh, managing the office, overseeing the way that it's operating, um, the assistant prosecutors who work in the office like Mr. Danner, um, and also drafting and handing down policies so that uh, we are careful with the very, um, you know, we have a lot of power and we have to be very careful with how we use that power, ensuring that we are using it for good and not for bad. And uh, that is a big part of my job. Hi everyone, my name is Judge Miriam Perry and I've been, this is my 20 year, 20th year of practicing. I started out as a judicial attorney in the Third Circuit Court in Detroit. I did that for many years and I was kind of like the behind the scenes person, kind of um, making sure my judge looked good. We handled primarily felony matters, um, it's kind of, there were, I think about 33 judges in that court. And every day we dealt with the most serious crimes um, that happened. It was a very busy, busy docket. And then for the last 14 years, I was uh, a public defender for Washtenaw County. And in that role, I represent people charged with a crime in every court in Washtenaw County. Um, in December, I was appointed to the 15 district court. Um, with, with district court, we handle cases in terms of criminal matters. We handle matters, uh, misdemeanors, crimes punishable by up to a year in jail. We handle the first part of felony matters, which are crimes punishable by, um, you know, more at least, you know, at least one year in prison. We do landlord tenant matters, we do civil matters. So it's kind of, I call the 15 district court, we're kind of like the people's court. And I don't know how much you know about all of us, but I was born and raised in Ann Arbor and I'm excited to hear any questions that you may have. Thank you. Um, let's move on to question three. Oh, so, you guys didn't want to, because we started in the middle. I was going to answer question two. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's okay. Go ahead. Um, go ahead. Again, I'm Toy Dennis, and I am currently a staff attorney for Legal Services of South Central Michigan. I am the Crime Victim Legal Assistant, a Legal Assistance Program Elder Attorney. 
And what that means is I basically service um, elders who are 55 and older who have been a victim of either a crime, have been um, manu- um, exploited in some way, um, are subject to some type of harm. Um, I basically am a general practitioner, pr- practitioner, which means I do a little bit of everything. I do landlord tenant. I've had contract cases. I've had PPOs. I've had um, probate matters as of guardianship or um, conservatorships. I handle um, nursing home evictions. Basically, I do a lot uh, in regards to the senior citizens. Um, And prior to that, I was a private attorney, a solo practitioner, who also was a general practitioner. Um, I've been practicing for about nine years now, and that sums it up. Okay. Um, so, uh, Ms. McCoy, you're next. So, yeah, so what I do is I, I handle criminal defense cases. So I do, uh, primarily felony cases, but I also do misdemeanor cases. I do appointed cases, uh, out of Wayne County. So I represent folks that are indigent. That means that they can't afford an attorney. So if they, adults. So I will go into court when they get in trouble and try to help them get out of trouble. Either that could be a, doing a plea or going to trial. I also do divorces. Uh, so I represent people like if, a, if, if parents are getting a divorce, um, helping them to figure out property division, custody, child support. Um, I also do some estate planning. So I help with, with drafting wills, um, durable power of attorney for health and finances. Uh, so I, that's, I do things of that nature. And as I said, I also work with educational advocacy. I'm working with a young student now. She's getting needing supports and helping make sure she graduates and gets all of her educational supports that she needs so that she can go on to college. Great, now we can move on to question three. Okay, uh, my question is, why did each of the panelists become a lawyer? Are we going to start over with me? Yes, let's go ahead. Just keep it streamlined. Okay, <laughs> okay. So <clears throat> I became an attorney because I wanted to help people. I I saw a lot of things that were wrong in our country and I wanted to do something about it. And I thought that becoming an attorney would give me the um, education that I needed to impact change in our communities. Um, I went to law school being a pretty much black and white, right or wrong type individual. But the first thing I realized in law school was that there is no exact right or wrong or black and white. Everything is gray. (laughs) And it depends on your um, spin on what it is or the side that you take. And um, that was disconcerting (laughs) to say the least. Um, And for the first, uh, I want to say seven or eight years, I didn't feel like I was impacting much change or becoming or being a help at all. And for the last couple of years that I've been working at Legal Services, helping some of our um, most marginalized individuals who need the most help and cannot afford um, to pay for their legal services. um, Since then, I have actually felt like I was doing what I was meant to do, and that's helping individuals um, impact change. Yes. And uh, so I decided to become a lawyer. I was uh, 14. I had thought about, I had had a background doing dance and some theater. I thought about being an actress. And then I was very conscious of, of, uh, my parents were big on uh, Afrocentricity and social justice issues. So I I was hearing about the disproportionate number of, of black males in the prison industrial complex. 
So I decided at 14, I wanted to become a lawyer. And I, you know, I, so I, you know, made sure to have that, that focus. Uh, my father was a lawyer. He did not do criminal. He did it for a minute. And then, but so, and I went to college and I did a pre-law program. Uh, and when I was in college, actually, uh, I was at University of Chicago and I connected with Michelle Obama. She helped me with my law school application. I went to law school uh, and uh, law school was intense. Um, I would say the highlight of law school was going to South Africa. And I, when I first got out of law school, I was working with my father. He was kind of mother hinting me, like I, he wasn't really giving me much action in the courtroom. So I, I decided to come to Detroit and I worked for a year as a public defender. Um, but yeah, I, I, so I decided to become a lawyer to help the brothers in the system. And then it was suggested that I work and help uh, kids. And so I've been doing that ever since. I, you know, I love working with folks and uh, yeah, just like advocacy. I mean, right now we have 2.3 uh, million people in the, the prison industrial complex and 40% of those are African-American. Uh, so I just felt that that was, it was important to make sure that we have good advocacy and representation. Well, I became a lawyer um, because one, I did want to help people, but my teacher, um, Dr. Plummer in fourth grade, realized that I like to look more deeper into issues, and she planted to see that um, that this would be something um, that would interest me and keep me busy in school as well as beyond in life. Um, so it was something I did. Uh, I decided to go back to after I was laid off from Chrysler. Originally, I was planning to stay in the HR field, but then I decided to go to law school and have additional opportunities for uh, open additional opportunities to me in the case. Um, sort of like what we're saying now, in case there's a layoff. There's a, once you get a law degree, there's so many different things you can do. So just like keep me employable. Um, the reason I became a lawyer was, was first I learned that it was something that I might be interested in doing. It was something that I might actually be good at and that I had uh, seemed to have some kind of talent for. And then the primary reason why is that I saw it as the, you know, I guess for lack of a better term, a golden ticket for me to get out of the circumstances I was in. So I didn't like the circumstances I grew up in and I thought, and the people I saw were who were successful wore suits and they were lawyers. So I decided that I would try my hand at that to hopefully get out of the circumstances I grew up in. I became a lawyer like everyone else because I wanted to help people. I have not always been a prosecutor. I've been a prosecutor for roughly about 60 days. I was once a criminal defense attorney because I wanted to um, help protect people who were um, coming into the criminal system. And it wasn't until recently, about two-ish years ago, that I realized I could help people even more if I sat at the top of a prosecutor's office to um, make policy decisions and decide who was going to come in and more importantly, who would not come in. So, um, you know, being a lawyer, you can do many different things and it just depends on uh, what it is that you want to do and how you want to help people. Um, I became a lawyer when I was, when I was in, I think it was high school. Um, I was in a, I think it was a, I think it was like high school. I was in a, like an explorers program. And in that program, we were exposed to the firefighters. We were exposed to the police and we had the chance to visit the 15 district court. And I it, I was just amazed by everything I saw. But one thing I noticed, I didn't see a lot of people who look like me. Um, in my family, I'm a second generation to go to college, but I'm the first one to become a lawyer. And when I looked around um, at everyone in different positions, like um, in government and just a lot of different areas, a lot of people had law degrees. And so I thought that having a law degree would provide the opportunity to help people and provide a lot of flexibility that, you know, so I would have a lot of different avenues of career choices. And so that's one of the things, if you're interested in being a lawyer, there's not one path. There are so many opportunities, so many different things you can do to help people. And so that, that was kind of, that's kind of been my journey. 
Thank you. Um, question number four. What does it take to become a lawyer? Well, I'll, uh, I'll use one of my father's sayings, hard work and sacrifice. <laughs> um, basically, uh, you need a bachelor's degree. So you need to graduate from high school and you need to have a undergrad degree, which is a four year degree called a bachelor's. And then after you have a bachelor's, you can go to law school. If you go to law school for straight through full time, it takes about three years. You can also do it part time and work. Um, and that usually takes about five years. Um, for me, uh, I was already a wife with three children and had a bachelor's and two masters and was working at Ford when I got the opportunity to um, take an educational buyout. I had always wanted to become a lawyer, but due to my path, um, I didn't see it as being able to quit work and go to law school full time. Um, so once I had the opportunity to um, take a buyout, even though I already had a few degrees, I chose to follow the path that I wanted to do all my life and become an attorney. Uh, one thing that you want to consider uh, if you know right away that you want to be a, become an attorney is to make sure that you try and stay out of trouble. Um, you will have to explain any convictions that you have on your record. Um, you want to try and keep good credit. I know a lot of people go to law school right out of undergrad, which was not my path. But sometimes we, um, when we're young, we take on a lot of credit and a lot of debt. You'll have to explain that. Um, and, you know, when it comes time to pass the bar, they really want to know everything about you, where you lived, what you did, all the way back, um, uh, you know, to the time, I think it was 12 years old, I believe. Um, so you want to try and stay out of trouble. Uh, as best you can, although we do have attorneys who have had um, criminal histories and bad credit and all sorts of th things that have turned their life around and um, become attorneys. But it does take more of an effort to pass the bar if you do have those things. So something to think about if you know now. Yeah, what I would say uh, is what does it take to become a lawyer? Uh, as attorney Dennis said, uh, you, you know, you, you typically will go to a four, go to college four years. There's no pre-law major. Um, some people do political science. I know my dad did political science. I did anthropology. I know some people um, say English is a good major to have, but there's no specific major. I would say in law school, you're going to be doing a lot of reading and writing. So it's good to have a major that, that's in that area. If you're interested in science, you could do science and become a patent lawyer. So, uh, but it's, if you know you wanna be a lawyer um, and that's, what, that's why it, to me, it was significant to talk to you guys at, at the high school level. Um, you know, we have an organization, the Van Zetti Hamilton Bar. So you could reach out to us, uh, try to shadow us. I mean, right now it might be like having just a setting up a Zoom meeting and talking to um, any one of us that's on the panel. Uh, and, 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 you know, when things get better, maybe coming, like I have, sometimes I'll have uh, interns come to me, shadow me in court, or I even have had some students that work with me in the summertime. And so they get to have firsthand experience, um, see what, seeing what lawyers, different lawyers do, see if it's something that they want to do. And so you go to college and I do teach at the college and I have been working with some students like, and, and then when you're in college, you take the LSAT, usually it's your senior year and you get your law school application together. And um, you know, you have to evaluate what, like Toy said, like depending on where you're coming from, are you gonna have to work? Like my dad had to work, he was married, he was with kids. So he went to Detroit College of Law, which is Michigan State College of Law. For me, I was blessed. I, did, I went to U of M. Um, and so I was able to be a day student and, and, and get through school in three years. Uh, my dad, it took him four years, uh, but I would say for law school, it, 
it takes hard work, reading, writing, being comfortable with speaking, um, and then the bar exam. So it's like you have different levels. You have the LSAT, and you have to take that to get into law school. Once you become a, a go into law school, you, you have to study hard, make sure you do well, graduate law school, and then you have to take the bar exam. And then once you take the bar exam, you become a licensed attorney, and then you can do anything with that. You can be a practicing litigator, or you could be a president of a corporation, you know, the, the sky's the limit. So I think we have time for about one more question. Um, and I'd actually like to skip to number seven. So if we could have number seven asked. Um, which lawyer do you admire the most? You said, who do we admire the most? Which lawyer? Which lawyer? Um, my first love is Justice, the late Justice Thurgood Marshall. That was my first legal crush. Um, to know all the things he's done. I love the Brown versus Board of Education, the backstory. Um, because actually two cases part of the um, of the Brown versus Board of Education. I love his work with the NAACP of bringing the issues. Um, Thurgood Marshall, his thing was that his focus was basically changing changing that dynamics of our country through the law. He saw as a long term that the law was the way to do it. Um, as we as you can see, that's still where we are. So, excuse me, <clears throat> still a day. Is the law is the best way to change things? So that that was my first legal crush. Uh, for me, it was Johnny Cochran. I was in fourth grade, I believe, when like the OJ trial was going on, and they had TV, so I could see him in court. He had a nice suit on, everybody respected him, people talked so highly of him. And it seemed that he demanded respect from everybody that he was around and that his mental capacity earned him that respect. And it, it basically showed me that there was another avenue to get to the high class lifestyle that you may want. And that mentally, if you were strong enough, people couldn't deny you and they would eventually respect your mental capacity. And that was what Turn me on to the law and to Johnny Cocker. For me, um, the attorney that I admire most now is not initially who I first admired uh, when I looked at attorneys. Um, for me, it's Charles Hamilton Houston, um, former dean of Howard Law School, um, prominent attorney with the NAACP Defense Fund. And the reason why I admire him most right now in my life and where I am in my career is because of these words. Charles Hamilton Houston once said, to be a black lawyer, you have one of two options. You can either be a social engineer for justice or you could be a parasite on your community. And I think that that is very important um, for attorneys, especially attorneys of color, because there are not a lot of black attorneys um, to whom much, give, much is given, much is required. And to have a law degree and a law license, it's a powerful tool and it is a privilege. And you need to be using this privilege and this powerful tool to reach back and help as many people in your community as you possibly can. And certainly if you cannot help them, do not hurt them with it. And I, Everyone mentioned, I um, really admire, I was thinking about this question. So I have a lot of people that I admire. One person, one of my sheroes is Gertrude Rush. She was the first African-American female to practice law in Iowa. And she tried to join the American Bar Association. And one of the things I want to encourage everyone to do is like when you go to college or go to law school, join a lot of different organizations so you can get familiar with what you're interested in. And so when people look at my resume, I'm involved in a lot of organizations. And when she um, was practicing, she couldn't join the American Bar Association. So she, along with four other men, um, formed the National Bar Association. And so um, this, these are, this is one one of my sheroes because you know she's such a trailblazer, and um, so when you're going through your journey from you know from high school, even in high school, there are a lot of different programs you can be involved in. Like I attended Spelman College, and before I attended Spelman College, I did a pre-college program, 
when I was in uh, college, I did a lot of different programs to kind of figure out what I wanted to do. There are a lot of internships. You can, like Robin was saying, you can shadow people. Um, you just want to be really well-rounded. A lot of things like when you're going to apply to law school, you know, they're going to be looking at your grades, your um, essays, your recommendations. So you kind of really want to be able to network and kind of be well-rounded and enjoy, enjoy every moment that you go through and try to take advantage of the opportunities that are available. There are a lot of opportunities and we're, a lot of us are trying to get to the finish line, but just enjoy the journey as well. Okay, um, um, so Ms. Dennis, you're gonna be our last person and then we've got to wrap it up because I actually have to teach a class, but <laughs> okay, um, go ahead. So rather quickly, uh, just as Judge uh, Perry said, I have a number of attorneys that I admire. Um, <clears throat> the first attorney that I <clears throat> admired was John, the late John Conyers um, out of Detroit. Um, when I worked at the UAW um, Ford, um, I was involved in um, worker to worker and community politics. And uh, John Conyers was always available to the people. He came around, he, he told you about legislation, you know, he gave information, <clears throat> even though he was a congressman, he was always available. And I admired that. Um, today, um, some of my she roles is the vice president, of course, Kamala Harris. Um, and some of the judges that have impacted my li life mostly would be um, Judge Cynthia Stevens and Judge um, Salinthia Latoya Miller um, at 36 District. Well, she was at 36 Districts, but she's now been promoted. Um, and we have a bunch of greatest um, judges around here who've done a lot. Judge Simpson, um, Judge Perry now, uh, Elaine Washington, who has just been... Um, uh, won an election for 14B. Um, these are African Americans who have impacted change in, in our community and are doing it on a daily basis. And they are down to earth. I, I uh, admire most people who are uh, accessible and um, personable and actually have a, need, a, a willingness and show it by helping and giving back. Okay, great. Well, thank you, everyone. Um, thank you, our panelists, for your insight into our Pathways to Law School. Thank you to our students um, for acting as moderators. And thank you to everyone who has been watching. And a special thanks to Ms. McCoy for putting this together. We really appreciate your hard work. And um, we'll go ahead and end the recording and the Zoom session now. But uh, again, thank you for your time. Well, thank you for hosting. Thanks for having us. Yes, I hope you all have a blessed day. Mm -mm.